Anyone's ready? Go ahead. So class is recorded. Catherine, the ones you have homework, you have homework on. All right. It's accumulative. Final is cumulative. Okay, Jay, go ahead. Oh, okay, that's great. Yes. And this is question 24 from chapter 8. If x is a Poisson rundown variable with mean 100, then p of x greater than 120 is approximately. Uh, so we have three options. Choose from those three options. Um, since it's in Poisson rundown variable, we know in Poisson rundown variable, the mean, the expert value is equal to the lambda, and the variance is also equal to the lambda, that means the lambda equal to 100, the variance equal to 100, that gave us sigma equal to 10. So we got our mean and sigma, so we just plug in to calculate it. And we have, uh, that's the final probability. Nice. And that much to option A. Okay. All right, simple and nice, thank you. Thank you. Let me make sure I give you grades, give you credits. Um, okay, who's going next? Hey, good evening, Kara. I am going next. So, can you see the screen? I think it's coming up. Yes, now. Okay. I am going to present uh, 8.13. Student scores on exam given by a certain instructor have mean 74 and standard deviation 14. This instructor is about to give two exams, one to a class of size 25 and other to a class of size 64. Find approximate the probability that the average test score in the class of size 25 exceeds 80. In the B part, repeat part A for the class size of 64. In the C part, we have to find approximate the probability that the average test score in the larger class exceeds that of the other class by more than 2.2 points. In the D part, we have to find approximate the probability that the average test score in the smaller class exceeds that of the other class by more than 2.2 points. Let that X represent the score of students on an exam mean 74 standard deviation 14 and 1 for the class 1 is equal to 25 and 2 for the class 2 64 is equal to 64. For the part A, probability in 2X bar greater than or equal to 80 in which is equal to 1 minus probability in 2x less than 80. So we expand the formula is equal to 1 minus probability in 2x bar minus mu over sigma uh, under root n less than 80 minus, um, we are putting the values, 80 minus 74 over 14 under root 25. So after solving it, we will get uh, 0.016 after calculation and uh, getting the value from the table. We will get it 0.0162. Therefore, the probability that the average test score in the class of size 25 exceeds. So, for the part B, we just increase the uh, class size. So, probability into x bar greater than or equal to 80. So, we just say, uh, change the class size in this section. So, the answer for this one will be 0 0.0003. Therefore, the probability that the average test score in the class of size 64 exceeds 80 is 0 0.0003. So for the C part, uh, approximate the probability that the average test score in the larger class exceeds that of the other class by more than 2.2 points. So let the random variable x represent the class of size 25. Let the random variable y represent the class of size 64. Respective value into y minus x is equal to 0. So we have to uh, implement the formula, which is the um, sigma square over n2 plus sigma square over n1. Um, then we will putting the value, we are putting the value 40 square over 64 plus 40 square over 25. So after calculation, we will get that 10.925. In it, we are getting that variance into y minus x. 
So sigma y minus x is equal to under root 10.9025, which is equal to 3.3019. So probability y minus x greater than 2.2 is equal to 1 minus probability into y minus x less than equal to 2.2. And then after putting the values, we will get 0 0.2514. So for the D part, we have to find expected value x minus y, which is equal to 0, which is given in the question. So variance x minus y is equal to variance x plus variance y. So uh, we get from in the previous C part, which is 10.9025, then sigma x minus y, which is 3.3019. Um, just we have to put in the values uh, in the probability x minus y greater than 2.2. And after solving it, we will get the 0 0.2514. Very nice. Sorry, let me put in my earphones on. Yeah, very interesting, eh? Same answer. Same results. Yes, okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kara. All right, let me make you guys present as well. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes. Can you see the screen? Yes. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Something's going on in the off. I don't know what's that. Anyway. Okay, um, Catherine, you cannot choose the same thing in the, you cannot choose from the same homework, you can only choose one of it, because I see you tap it in 8.1, 8.2b, you can only choose one of them, okay, present one of them. Okay, I'll do 2b. Okay. Can I do the one from the chapter 4? Yeah, let's see if it's interesting. Okay. So um, I presented part A before, and the answer to that was 0 0.8824, which is mentioned on in part B. Which does, so, well, I'm going to read the whole question over. Oh, hold on. You presented 8.2A before? Yeah. Oh, you didn't present the B? No, I hadn't so done that it. Comes Oh, you should do that. Then you should do 8.1, 8.2. So I'll count 8.2 to the other one. I didn't realize you didn't finish it. Okay. Yeah. So do I do 8.1? Yeah, you do 8.1 as one presentation. The B is just make up for your previous one. Okay. So you should finish with one question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So yeah. 8.1 is supposed that X is a random variable with mean and variance both equal to 20. What can be said about P0 greater than X greater than 40? Let X be a random variable with mean 20 and variance 20. The probability can be written as negative 20 is less than or equal to X minus 20 greater or equal to 20 or the square root of X minus, sorry, the absolute value of X minus 20 less than or equal to 20. I don't know how to pronounce this inequality. Chebyshev's Chebyshev's inequality, which is I stated here and I plugged it into the equation. So the probability of absolute value of x minus 20 less than 20 is greater or equal to 1 minus 20 over k squared. So k variance equals 20 and k times the square root of 20 is 20. So k equals the square root of 20. The probability of absolute value of x minus 20 is less than or equal to 20, less than or equal to 20 over the square root of 20 squared, which can be said that the probability equals the square root of x minus 20 is less than or equal to 20 is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so the upper bound is 1. All right. And then the B part from before, 
using the same inequality, um, the probability 65 is less than x, less than 85 equals probability of square root of x minus 75 is less than 10, which give us one minus the probability of absolute value of x minus 75 is greater than 10. One minus the variance over 10 squared, which I entered it from, like I said, it was, I did the other one before. So right. one minus 25 over 100 is one minus 0 <laughs> 0.25, which gives you 0.75. All right. And then uh, 4.21, 4 four buses carrying 148 students from the same school arrive at a football stadium. The buses carry respectfully 40, 33, 25, and 50 students. One of the students is randomly selected. Let X denote the number of students who were on the bus carrying the randomly selected student. One of the four bus drivers is also randomly selected. Let Y denote the number of students on her bus. A, which, which of the expect, expected value of X or expected y, value of Y do you think is larger Y? And B, part B is compute the um, expected value of X and expected value of Y. So this is the expected value for X. So P, X equals 40 is 40 over 148 because that bus holds 40 students out of the 148. And that gives you 1.27. For x equals 33, you get 0 0.22. For x equals 25, you get 0 0.17. For x equals 50, you get 0 0.34. The expected value equals 40 times 0 0.27 plus 33 times 0 0.22 plus 25 times 0 0.17 plus 50 times 0 0.34 equals 39. 0.31. For the expected value of y, all the buses have 0 0.25 because they all had the same chances of being picked out of random. So 40 times 0 0.25 plus 33 times 0 0.25 plus 25 times 0 0.25 plus 50 times 0 0.25 is 37. So the expected value of x turned out to be bigger than the expected value of y. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have Odarius and Ayat. Yeah, it's me. Okay, so. The question 823, let us be Poisson uh, random variable of the mean 20. Uh, and we have uh, five questions. First one, use the Markov inequality to obtain an upper bound on P equal to probability of X more than equal or equal to 26. Okay, uh, so for part A, I used the uh, Markov's inequality uh, from chapter eight on the first page. Uh, it's a probability of X more than equal to A is uh, uh, less or equal to uh, mean over A. And uh, it equals to 10 over 13, which is 77%. Uh, okay. So next one, part B, I use one-sided Chebyshev inequality uh, to obtain an upper bound on P. So uh, for one-sided Chebyshev inequality, I used uh, this formula, which I found uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, formula on, in the textbook is different. <laughs> okay, in this formula, uh, lambda is not the same as uh, lambda in person. We can use, uh, change the lambda uh, letter a for example so it's confusing um, so to calculate uh, one side the inequality we have everything we need um, uh, mean equal to 20 
lambda equal to six, which is calculated here. And uh, sigma square, uh, it's a variance of X for Poisson uh, distribution and variance equals to uh, expected value, which is mean it equals to 20. So um, the probability equals to five over 14, which is uh, 36%. Um, for part C, use the Chernoff bound to obtain an upper bound on P. Uh, and again, this formula is not from the textbook. Uh, you can find this formula on Wikipedia. Um, ex um, expected value. So we have everything to calculate. Uh, expected value uh, equals to lambda. Here lambda, it, it's a lambda from Python, Poisson distribution. So lambda, lambda uh, here is equal to 20. Uh, uh, T equals to six, uh, 20 plus six, uh, it's uh, uh, given uh, 26. Uh, that's why T is a six. And uh, uh, I calculated uh, it equals to 44%. So I, I put a uh, lambda uh, number here, T, and uh, let's say put 44%. Okay, next question is D. Um, approximate uh, P by making use of the central limit theorem. Okay, by using the central limit theorem, a probability of uh, X more than, than or equal to 26 uh, is equal to probability of Z more than or equal to 1.34. Uh, it's uh, um, 26 minus 20 uh, divided by square root of 20. Uh, we know that uh, sigma square is uh, 20, because uh, it equals to, uh, it's a variance, that the, and variance and, and the expected value uh, are the same for Poisson distribution. Okay. Uh, okay, so by using central limit theorem, uh, probability equals to nine uh, percent. Um, and the last question: <laughs> determine p by running an appropriate program. So wow, in the, what is that? Wow, the calculator! I didn't even talk about this. In the show us. Yeah. R studio, in the R studio, this is the code that could place the probability greater than or equal to twenty six. It's eleven percent. Uh, and that's just a graph of uh, Poisson distribution with mean 20. Yeah, mean 20, 20 and the variance is the same, 20. That's it. Yeah, the bell curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have Aldarius, your turn. Okay, uh, so I did uh, problem 6.51. Um, so we're going to consider a sample size five from a uniform distribution over zero one. Compute the probability that the median is in the interval one, four to three, four. All right, so we have F is going to be our cumulative distribution function of uh, the uniform distribution in zero one. Uh, we have our samples x1 to x5, and the median is going to be x3 in that sample set. So first, we need to find the distribution of x3. Uh, we calculate that out where t, t uh, is going to be less than um, three out of five of them, and it's going to be greater than two of the, uh, the variables. So that's where the combinatorial comes from there. Uh, and we multiply that out. And so once we have that, um, then we need to find the probability that X3 is in one four to three four. So uh, calculating that out, we do the probability of X3 less than three four minus the probability that X3 is less than or equal to one four. And when we use what we have in um, 
uh, the distribution of X3 uh, on top, and we just uh, plug in uh, the values uh, below, and we arrive at uh, 0 0.1758, probability of that's 0 a, 0 That's a nice question. That's a nice question to present. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. So Darius. Right. Anyone else like to present? Yeah, last chance. No more class next week. Next week is readings week. For classes are not able to do review, they can choose one day to do review. Okay, I shall make you presenter. But for us, we're not going to meet. Um, before I present, <clears throat> sorry, before I present, yeah. I just want to say, um, reading day is actually tomorrow and Saturday. We still have classes on Monday and Tuesday. Oh, really? I don't know what I have done here. I wrote it. Today is the last class. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for us, today is our last class. Well, I, I think sorry. because they made it like a little weird, they put reading day. Yeah. That's fine. They, they, they put like reading day before like the official last day of classes. All right. And also, you know, I worked for Hunter College also, and the Hunter College has different policies from Brooklyn College. They are all different. Yeah, I'm still learning each school's policies. Anyway, let's go with this. But for us, we're not going to meet next Monday or Tuesday, OK? Today's our last class. And I'll see you on May 23rd. If anything changes, just pay attention to the announcement. If I put, um, yeah, I'll try to send you an email, too, also, through CUNY first, if anything changes. Otherwise, I see you May 23rd, which is a Tuesday, the Tuesday after next, six o'clock on campus, the room number, and uh, I posted it on Blackboard. All right. Yeah, you can make a formula sheet, but the only um, formula, not for anything else. Okay, let the eyes finish hers, and then we talk about anything else. Yeah, go ahead, eyes. Okay, um, I prepared, can I present two questions? Yes. Okay, so I prepared 8.17 as my first question. And 8.17 asks to example. Yeah, this one looks like looks familiar. We do example five B under um, the Uh, okay, then I can just do um, 8.16. Oh. Nice. Um, so for 8.16, it says Apple producers Wenzu and Zandu enroll in a contest. Record shows Apple's way. Okay. The mic is uh, Professor, did you say something? 
Oh, well, I didn't hear you. I thought you, you muted yourself. I think that's just a lag of the internet. Yeah. Okay. Are you talking? I didn't hear anything. Oh. Okay. I I couldn't hear anything. Maybe maybe your mic is muted. Um, no, my my mic is on, but like the connection, like near the mic, it, it has like a red bar. Oh, I can hear I you it's now. It's telling me that my connection is bad. Oh, okay. But I hear you okay, now. Okay, so can I can I try again? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Um. So the the question says. Apple producers Wenzu and Andrew enroll in a contest. Records show that Wenzu's apples weigh 94.1 grams on average with a standard deviation of 17.1. And as Andrew's produce produce. respectively. The winner will be the Wenzu claim thus is exceeding on um I had attempted it Um, getting so it took me a while to figure this one out and something you had to pay attention to was that the judges had picked samples from their produce but their like their numbers for the standard deviation and such came from all of their apples and this specific thing was only addressed like at the very end of chapter 7 which I think was in 7.8 so down here I pasted the proposition which if we are taking a sample from a population, then that particular sample's variance is actually variance over n. So from that, I deduce that this. So using that, you can um, go back to the central limit theorem and use it for both Zandru and Wenzu. And um, I plug everything in, and you have the probability of z being greater than 2.04, which is about. 0 0.0207 for Wenzu, and then for Zandru, you had probability of Z being greater than 1.96, which point us to work out the probability that Zandru's sample mean exceeds that of Wenzu's. I tried something, but I didn't get the correct answer, and I couldn't figure this part out, so just like disregard my work. But um, I thought the, the part for part A was interesting. Yeah, I saw your notation is a little bit weird. Because you have probability of x greater than 100, you're trying to convert it into z-scores. Remember the textbook use a fee for z-score. Uh, you just use a bracket. Because uh, if you only use bracket, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, can't hear you. Um, I mean, they 
do it this way in the textbook too. I'm not sure what you mean. The bracket. Because because you started with yeah. the probability of x greater than 100, right? Yeah, because that's what they're looking for. Right. So that's the uh, probability. So you should if you should either you carry on probability p, you carry on p to show this probability. Um, you don't use only use a bracket. I'm not sure if I'm making sense to you. You only put a bracket around. What do you mean by bracket? Only putting bracket here. Maybe you uh -huh. just missing after writing P in front. Oh, uh, do you mean Do you know over here? Well, what about the first line? So what about the line above it? You have you started with the probability with bracket. You don't use parentheses, right? You use bracket. X greater than 100 close oh, with bracket. Um, then equals uh, to bracket. Like wrong notation? Uh, look after you close sign. You you don't see my cursor, right? Oh, oh. Okay. No, I can't see your cursor, but I understand what you mean now. Okay. If you just put the P in front, the bracket. But uh, by convention, because mathematics has a lot of conventions. By convention, we use a parenthesis. We don't use a bracket. When we indicate the probability. For, for all the P ones, right? Right, so you mean probability, right? So you should at least carry P through. Right, that's a notation we're using. Just by okay. convention. Sorry about that. And also afterwards, after equal sign, after equal sign, you only use bracket. I have never seen people using bracket oh, to you only use bracket. bracket. I don't see anywhere you only using bracket to mean probability though. Which textbook you use? It's just that I don't that important, like whether we use brackets or parentheses. I'm I'm sorry about that. Oh, mathematics is a convention, right? We all have to agree upon something so we can talk about in the same language. Because if you do this in the final exam, how am I going to give you grades? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... you you because you only use bracket. So what do you mean by bracket x minus 94.1? To me, I understand you are trying to convert it into z score, right? But still, this is part of the probability. You're just inside the variables, you're changing x to be z score, to be standard normal. No, you use, you just use parentheses. You use p. OK, let me type in the chat. You have p of x minus whatever the p of blah 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 okay that means probability once you change to be z score you want to use a fee the symbol fee i won't be able to type in the chat that's from our textbook no we don't use a weekly bracket usually only for some special occasions we use p parentheses to indicate probability. Because mathematics is, a, is different from, I don't know, other courses. You know, for science, actually for any scientific topic or subjects, we have to obey the conventions. Otherwise, we don't know. You know if we don't have a common language to, to, to talk, 
you know, if I speak English to you, if I speak Chinese to you, you speak English to me, you don't understand Chinese, I don't understand English. So how are we going to communicate? So mathematics is all about convention, you know, speaking on the same language so we can understand each other. Anyway, I, I don't see your presentation anymore. Yeah, just try to make the corrections. I think your calculations are right. Um, give me one second. Okay. I mean, I, I understand the gist of it. It just all has to be parentheses, right? You just have to follow the convention. <laughs> You know, what have we been talking about? What have we been using? Okay, okay, I can, yeah. I can do that. Anyone else like to present today? Cooking some last cup of credits. Can I do 5.8? Who's this? Catherine with the K. Catherine, no. <laughs> you already did it twice. You cannot just cramp everything into one class. It won't be fair for other students, right? Because other students can only present at one time each class, and then they did it. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding. We are spoiled by the nice weather. Only the pollen is not so good. The weather has been great this cup this week. Hopefully our finest week is as great as now. Yeah, I haven't gone outside yet today. I went outside yesterday, it was very nice. But looks very nice from my windows. How are you going to calculate extra? Oh, yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, let's go to our syllabus. Oh, let me share my screen with you. I see you can still fix your problems, all right, then come back to present. But while you're doing that so we can talk about our grading policy. Uh, and some of you, you know, have done marvelous work. And I'm sure you're doing exactly fine for the final. And, uh, you know, some of you really, I, I am really impressed by your diligence, by your capabilities of learning. Basically, this class is a self-study, yeah, because this is a little bit higher level. It's like a medium level of mathematics. And uh, you have shown me what you can do. And that I think, I think for those of you, you know, you can go far in your life. Okay, so just keep to be, to do like that. And keep to be like that, be diligent, you know, because you registered for this class, you're responsible for it. You're responsible for yourself. And you have done what I have asked. And this class, I have to tell you, this class um, among four of my classes, I enjoy this one a lot. Because I think learning in the end is a self-study. 
right? And especially in this in this era, you know, you people, you know, you are still young. Well, you live in a different era, and the information and knowledge, it, you know, it's all there for you to grasp. You don't you don't have to wait for somebody to teach you. You can learn. You can learn from all different sources. I'm still learning stuff. I'm learning Spanish. I'm learning Chinese medicine. Not really medicine, Chinese medical stuff. You know, Chinese people believe in human body. I'm amazed by our body, you know, physical bodies. Chinese people believe we have 12 meridians and, you know, a lot of uh, acupuncture points, short places. I am just fascinated with this idea, and I think it's the wisdom from heaven. And also, I do yoga almost every day. So I'm learning. I'm, you know, I'm in my fifties. I'm still learning. And you are in your twenties. You need to learn much, much more. And uh, some of you have shown me how much you can do. And you can go far, far in your life. Keep doing that. All right, keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, I have people help me with my Spanish. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, you have a lot on your plate. All right. So, you know, keep learning. Keep learning. You don't need a lot of times. You don't need a teacher. I don't need, I mean, I don't need a teacher, but I have a lot of teachers from YouTube channel, from Chinese social media platforms. Because people nowadays, they're just so prompted to make videos of their knowledge. I'm thinking myself, one day, maybe I'll make some mathematics videos. I don't know yet. But right now, I'm just keep learning stuff. Because that's so, you know, once we put time into it, something we'd like to learn, there's so many sources. OK, anyway, let's come back to here. So 15% from your attendance, 20% from your homework, 15% class presentation, as long as you pre presented 10 times, you gain this 15. 20% from your midterm, 30% from your final. If you have done all this, if you get, you know, A or A plus already, you don't really need the extra points, right? Let's see now, how do I apply? Like a J. J presented 25 times, so he has 15 more. He presented 15 more times. If he didn't get an A, let's see, you know, if his final didn't get ideal grades, so what do I do with these 15 more? 15, so 15, so 10 more is 15 more points. And he has five more. So I'm going to apply this to his final exam, extra points. All right. I can apply your extra points to your final. All right, now, if someone said, you know, did very well on their final, they don't need extra points for the final. They already have 98, 95. Maybe they didn't have a good grades on midterm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the extra points to his midterm to even out these ones. So whatever, you know, to benefit you, I'll do that, okay? That's how I apply extra credits. Does, do I make sense? All right. Well, no, just just make just to do very well on the final. Okay, so you're you're at the finish line. Your your goal is to reach the finish line, which is do well for the final. Do well for the final. All right. Any other questions? And also, I hope you, you know, all of you know, there's so many opportunities 
All right, there's so many opportunities from colleges, from you know, all different kinds of foundations, all kinds of labs. Just make sure you have you you know you you can you can find all the resources. Right. So, which basically means try to build up your you know try to try to find a wider horizon. Try to build up your networking. Networking is so important. Right. And uh, you are young, you know, you are, the future is yours, all right? Just be diligent, be productive. Yeah. You're going to go so far in your life and, uh, and which will give you, you know, good feelings about life. Anyway, any other questions? <laughs> what? Ah, uh, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what happens because everything's online nowadays? You don't, you don't, do you have a religion? Do you go to church? You don't speak to people? Why? Why not? <laughs> okay. Okay, kid. Okay, kiddies, kiddos. Um, all right. If any of you like to talk to me in person or email me, go ahead to do that. All right. Um, you know, I was raised and I grew up in China. I came to America for my study, for my colleges, and. Um, yeah, I have gone through a lot in my life already. I raised two kids. Uh, I was a single mother. I'm still single. And yeah, if you, if you, okay, if you, if you feel, if you don't feel like talking to people, at least you can talk to me, okay? I guarantee you, I'll keep everything between you and me. And, uh, yeah, we, we need to talk to someone, all right? We need to talk to someone. In my church, there's a program for young people. Uh, I forgot the title of it. All right, basically encourage young people to look to look for mentors, you know, someone you like to talk to, someone can help you to build your career or to build your networking, and I can help you with that, okay? Definitely, I can help you to build your networking. I can introduce you a lot of nice, good, and successful people uh, to you, okay? They are, they are successful. So money is not an issue for them at all. So because they are very successful, they want to help young people. Okay, I can introduce you to, to this kind of program. And uh, yeah, talk to me, all right? And I can share my resource with you to help you to be successful in life. Do you have in-person office hour? I don't have to, but we can we can schedule for it. May 19th, I will be on campus the whole day. If any of you want to see me on campus in person, I live in Manhattan. If you come to Manhattan, you see, oh, you know what? I'm going to Manhattan. Can I meet you, you know, where and where? If you don't find a place, you can come to my building. My building has a conference room. We have a very nice deck. And we can talk we can, we can talk in the conference room, in the lounge. In the lounge is our playroom. Anyway, I welcome you, okay, to my world. I welcome you to my world. Okay, I can show you my world, and my world has a lot of good people. A lot of good people. They just want to help young people to be successful in life, to be happy, to be happy in life. All right? Just send me an email. Send me an email, okay? So we can become lifelong friends. Okay. All right. All right, so Ayat, if you want to talk to me, if you want to add one more note to your networking, 
I'll be happy. I'll be so thrilled to be that one, to be a second node. <laughs> Okay, yeah, send me email, okay? Because um, I'm going to China to visit my mom and my brother uh, in July and August. But the whole June, I'll be free. I have a, a whole June to be free. And also my son and Tom, I mean, Tom and other kids. If you want to talk to my son, uh, he studies in University of Chicago. He's a mathematics student. He studies mathematics and data science. I remember Tom wants to go into data science, right? I don't remember. I, I mean, I don't remember clearly. But anyway, so you guys can talk to me and also talk to my son. My son is a good young man. I admire him as his mother. I love him, of course, and also I admire his qualities. He has such a beautiful heart. He just wants to help people to be happy and successful. A lot of times he doesn't really care about himself. Yeah. He spent time for others. He's, he's a such good human being. Yeah, you can talk to him because he's, he's, he's a junior now. He's graduating next year. All right. So if any of you wants to meet him, Make a friend, add one node on your networking. You know, talk to me. You can add my son in your networking too. He's such a good young man. Anyway, anybody has any other questions? Life is difficult. Life is not easy. Life, you know, is life is meant to be difficult because it's difficult you know we can learn we can grow to be stronger we can learn more we can become you know capable of doing things anyway uh, if you have no more question and uh, before uh, 23rd, before we meet, if you have any questions, feel free to send me email anytime. And uh, if you have no more questions for now, you are a free bird for tonight. And I really appreciate this semester to be with you guys. Okay, Yongxin is asking, what if I don't do good on the final? I don't have confidence. Well, if you don't feel good to do on the final, so time is now to study. You have almost two weeks. Right? You have almost two weeks. 23rd, you have almost two weeks to study. There's no excuse not to do well in the final. Is it possible to pass this class with a low score in the final? It depends. Let me see your, let me see what you have now. I cannot share this with everybody, so let me. Yeah, for individual cases. Right, you have presented 14 times, so that's great. And you have done homework. You have done all the homework. Your May term is 90, so what do you have to worry about? You only have, haven't finished Chapter 8 yet. What do you have to worry about? Nothing to worry about, right? You probably won't get an A if you don't do very well in the final. But you, you know, surely you will pass, I think, if you don't get under 50 for your final. If you get a 70, that's a guarantee you will pass this class. So don't worry, because sometimes, you know, so humans tend to worry about the future. No, you know, we feel anxious. Whenever we feel anxious, it's because we worry about the future. No, you know, leave now. So if you leave now and follow your plan. So your plan is to do well on the final, right? So what do you do? You just study, you just study, you just study. Because the only thing you can control is now. Right? 
So make sure now you study for the final. Yeah, I don't see any problem. You don't you don't pass you don't you don't pass this course. So you're 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 doing fine until you know. Yes, so you have but you are a free bird, all right? If you have no questions for tonight. You're welcome, you're welcome. So study now, prepare for your final. I think you will be fine. Everyone will be fine. Okay, Jay is asking, do you know what's the mean, what's the main point of variance? Main point of variance, what do I know if, oh, okay. So why do we need a variance? Variance is testing how close the data sets to each other. Let's see if I had data set, right? Let's see I have a data set of uh, uh, grades of one class. Maybe someone has 20, maybe someone has 100. So the, the, the range will be from, the range will be 80. But if another exam, I have everybody, you know, from 80 to, to 80 to 90, so the data set are closer. So variance is telling us how close the data set to each other. Do I make sense? All right, let's see, Kara saying, can you also look at my grades, Kara? Okay, Kara, I think you're doing, you did fine. Okay, let me answer Jess question. Je, je, do, you, do I make a, uh, sense for you? Okay, okay, comparing to standard deviation, okay. Standard deviation, the z-score, the z-score basically making any data set to be standard, of course, for normal distribution. So for normal distribution, we could have you know, any kinds of data set, but the standard uh, normal, standard normal is making any data set, you know, have the center, have the mean to be zero, have the standard deviation to be one. So, you know, all those like marvelous phenomena stuff. Okay, anyway, you can, uh, okay, let me see your, let me see yours, but I cannot share with people. Okay, okay. You care. Well, you presented 18 times and your attendance is 100%. You have done all your homework, even chapter eight. And your midterm is 100%. What do you have to worry about? Because all class is small. I think most of you do, did very well. <laughs> no, aiming for A, A plus. How many questions do we have to do for chapter A for homework? 10 questions, because only two sections, 8.2, 8.3. Choose at least five from each. Oh, you want to skip final? Why you want to skip final? No. <laughs> final is on campus. Because if you skip final, you lose 30% of your grades. You only have 18 to make up. <laughs> we'll see. I'll see. Okay. If any changes, I'll make in the announcements. Yes, Darius, you can always attain your late homework. You don't get 100% anymore, but you still get most of the credits. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Let me see. Let me see if I should allow you to skip final. If anything changes, I'll make an announcement, okay? All right, thank you, Catherine. Keep you guys, keep your good work. Okay, bye, Catherine. Catherine was in two of my classes. Nice. Okay. 
Thank you, Yunxin. Yeah, Yunxin, do not worry about future. Okay, just do now. Worry about now. Worry about what you are doing right now. Just know you, you are doing the right thing, you know, at the right time for now. Because the only, only thing you can control is now, not even next minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me stop recording.